little bit. Um, can everyone hear me fine? Is there... oh, I, I, I'm not very what? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm not like very good with technology or anything, so I apologize. Um, can everyone hear me now? No. Whoa, whoa. Uh, yo, yo, the, the other mic, or is, is, is this okay now? This is better. Okay. This sort of sucks. Um, um, before I get started, I'd just like to um, thank a few people for some things. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank my good friend Dave Atel. Um, for every stand up, Dave. He's looking for a job. He he, he needs work. Um, on the subject of Dave, um, he ha he hosts our website or a mirror of it. So, like, if any one of you think you're cool for like breaking into that or something, you're just like about as cool as OpenBSD developers. So. <laughs> Um, I, I, on the quick you know, subject of OpenBSD, um, if you're an OpenBSD developer, could you come up here right now? Any OpenBSD developers, come on. You said you wanted to like hassle me and stuff. Yeah, come on up. How's it going? Hi, pretty good, pretty good. Well, the cheers? No, wait. <laughs> Theo's gonna see that, it'll kick my ass. What was that? I said Theo's gonna see that, it'll kick my ass. <laughs> um, okay, it's all three way. Oh, you give only one thing to No, Jason's out there somewhere. Mark. Jason, Mark, could you guys come up here? Oh, actually, Neil's my favorite too. Niels, my friend from, you know, the University of Michigan. <laughs> Niels? Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to thank Mark Litchfield from Next Generation Software for buying my ticket so I could get here. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going through all this stuff at the beginning of the speech because I'll be shot soon, and I just want you know credit to go where, it goes, where it's deserved. So, while I have the chance. Um, Anyhow, uh, this will be fun. Yeah, um, let's see, I, I've got a couple friends here who are going to help out with this speech. Um, we, yeah, um, first I'd like to introduce my friend Silvio. And um, my good friend um, and associate, the Unix Terrorist, coordinator of Project Mayhem. Um, let's see here, what else was I going to talk about? Okay, yeah. Uh, I suppose we can start now. Uh, you guys make sure your mics work and... Yo, mic check. Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's up? I'm a Unix terrorist, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it off to Gobbles. He's gonna continue the speech, you know what I'm saying? So. I, just wanna, I just wanna test if my mic is working. Um, Eric can hear me okay? Okay. Um, so where do we want to start? Like, what do, what do people want to talk about? Like, what are the myths of computer security? Because I think uh, the Gobbles people, the Alate people, even though a lot of people... Show some respect. <laughs> so, like, a lot of people are probably pretty pissed off with the Alate 3, uh, with the Gobbles postings. Um, I'm not actually a member of Gobbles or Alate, but... I am definitely a supporter. Um, it's I feel
feel that was very inappropriate. <laughs> So, so what did people think of the late three? Like this, you know, there were so many myths in computer security, such as um, the government, the vendors, they all really care about computer security. Um, a late three was pretty enlightening. The Gobbles posts have been pretty enlightening into what actually is being done in computer security and how much the computer security vendors, uh, the, you know, the corporate sponsors of computer security people, how much they actually care for the industry and what they try to do and what they tell people um, in respect to this. Um, there's a lot of examples. Uh, a late three, um, you know, pissed off a lot of people, but this stuff actually happens. Um, a late three, um, it's oh, a... Wow. I'd like to point out real quick that hackers hack. That's, that's still yet to be decided, I'm afraid. <laughs> but if you look at a late three, there's, there's a book of, like, logs. Um, you know, it's... Maybe it's fiction. Um, I wish I could write that much fiction, um, you know, and keep on pumping it out because these things actually happen and there's definitely um, a lot of things that the corporate sponsors, the government is trying to do um, and is not telling people. Um, Silvio hasn't been drinking yet today, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I did all that on Friday, so today I've been like um, just having a couple of glasses of water, I'm um, trying to relax, but it's very hard at a conference like this. <laughs> Another important topic we're going to be discussing is Project Mayhem. As you may know, I'm the Unix terrorist, and bringing terror to the internet is my game, you know? I come from the heart of darkness. I just like to share that with security focus, with all the mailing lists. So we're going to discuss some techniques that you can use at home to wreak havoc. So I think we're going to start with the hit list now. It's pretty long, so we better get started. So we got like probably going to have like a mad fucking question section X, you know, we might even have an ethics panel, so it all depends on what we have time for. As you know, this is a last speech, so, I mean, if you guys want to chill out here, Project Mayhem and Gobbles, that's cool, but if you want to be a bunch of pussies and catch your flights home, you know, I understand. What do, what do people want to talk about? Like, what do they think computer security is? I, I do have a speech prepared. <laughs> Yo, break it down, Gobbles. Um, show some respect, please. This is Silvio. I just work here. I'm 22. <laughs> Do you know who this man is? He pioneered the Unix virus. <laughs> and, and I must be a Unix terrorist. I must be a Unix terrorist because I've written some virus. That, that's why I've been in a late so often, and that's why there are so many logs and so much evidence to say what's been going on. Um, if people, you know, like, I'm, what do people really think computer security is? What do people think computer security is? Yo, Silvio, I think you're out of control. You need to calm it down a bit. We're going to have time to get to us, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, let's get to our first topic now. So, um, Silvio is not a drug abuser either. The first thing I'd like to talk about are media whores who try to represent the hacking world. Um, the first set of lists that we're going to talk about is all of the dead cows. Um, as I'm sure you all know, uh, the cult of the dead cow people, they... Sorry. I don't know if they're even in here. They might still be drying up from the pool. Uh, there, there, there's the death vegetable. He can't code. Yo, yo, CDC, holla back at me. <laughs> What's up, Doc? You know what I'm saying? Give us a shout out. Yeah, uh, the cold of the dead cow, the, the members, they, they like to, you know, get on tech TV, tell everyone what hackers are doing, what the motivations of hackers are, you know, what's going on in whatever scene that still exists. And really, these are like old guys who have no connection to hacking, to what little bit of a scene, that, a scene there is, which is, you know, pretty shitty. Um, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> Excuse me, um, I'm a smoker. Um, they, 
Yo, I'd like to make a clarification. You know, as I was saying, I'm a Unix terrorist, so I bring terror online, but I would never advocate terror in real life. You know, that's not cool. And, you know, CDC, they got these bomb-making techniques and busting out with, like, explosives. shining that sniper scope up here. I'd like you to know that the Unix terrorist has been known to bring a Glock to DEF CON. Um, so if you want to step up here, you know, you're welcome to do so. Just flash your piece. I'm looking for you, son. Uh, if, if I could get, like, some DEF CON goons or whatever to confiscate every laser pointer out in the audience, I'd appreciate it, because it's becoming a big disruptance. Thank you. Um, what? A every single laser pointer. I'd like you to search every single person and find out. <laughs> um, Okay. Um, the guy in the wheelchair with like women to search. If you we just we just got the go ahead for the cavity search on CDC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyhow, Mr. Emmanuel Goldstein likes to. Um, you know. <laughs> I think you're confusing um, him with John Draper. So, so, so someone, <laughs> um, someone back here, I don't know if everyone heard it, just said that Emmanuel Goldstein likes to touch little boys. I'm not, I just, I'm not saying that, it's just, you know, what I heard from someone back here. If, if you are a little boy that can confirm this, I would... <laughs> 
I, I, I would like to write on it sometime. But, um, yeah, that's a little off subject. Anyhow, other than touching little boys, apparently, he likes to get involved with any computer-related case he can or, you know, bitch about the same things over and over again. And this guy, you know, if any of you out there ever get in trouble, the worst thing you can do is go to 2600 for help because, like, all this guy wants to do is lose a court in, or at least lose the case in court so he has something to bitch about in his little magazine. And, like, speaking of that magazine, it's not even like as good as frack so like I appreciate it if everyone out there stops buying it so no, it just go that away. That was cold gobbles. What? That was pretty cold. Yeah well he's like never had a real job he needs one at some point in life yeah anyhow Emmanuel needs a security job too Check it up out there. Yeah. Um, next, we'll speak of Boo Boo. The other media horrors is anyone from Boo Boo here who'd like to come up? Um, Shock. Shock. Where are you, Shock? Yo, can Matt? Does Shock? anybody know how to flash the Woo Woo gang sign? <laughs> Does anyone here do the Woo? <laughs> I've been on the channel once or twice. All right, yeah, uh, they're, they're another one of these groups that likes to, you know, get on TV, likes to be the spokespersons for the underground, or whatever the hell that means, and like, I don't know, they've got like, us. I, I, I had a good talk with Shock the other night, and you know, he admitted to me that Boo Boo is only three people, and those people would be um, Napster, No Carrier, and Shock. So the rumors of the group being, you know, 30 plus members, oh wait, I forgot, um, Super Luck, He's a member of Woo Woo, the guy who releases 15 advisories a week for shareware Windows programs. So I guess... Yo, you can find that on uh, USSRback.com. <laughs> yeah, um, so I guess they are a little more prolific with their advisories and publications than like two lame AOL advisories a year and like an advisory on Mac OS, or Microsoft holes on Mac OS. You know, that's, yeah, some pretty... It's all about the Woo Woo Angry Packet conglomeration. So where is it I confirmed that there are uh, uh, vulnerabilities in uh, certain products out there? So th yeah. that's a rumor confirmed. Uh, there are vulnerabilities not disclosed that vendors know about. I uh, heard that the Napster software was deliberately implanted with a feature which allowed a worm to take instant access of every client on the net. So just just remember who's coding these free software tools you use. You know, it could be someone from Google. Yeah, you, you've got to be careful with people like Napster no carrier around. Yeah. Uh, we, we audited ngrep. Um, it's like TCP dump dash VVV pipe to grep. Great program. Um, it's exploitable in seven places so far from what we've found. So like be careful using that. Yeah, um, thanks. But anyhow, back to you know woo, woo in general. Um, it would be appreciated if those members of the press again, you know, would stop talking to these people and you know doing interviews because really it's like a bunch of morons once again. Um, they, I, I was talking to one member who's listed as a member and all last night, or the night before rather, and he said, yeah, I don't even know why the fuck they say that I'm in woo-woo. Like, this is news to me. So they just basically list anyone they know as a member. I don't like those guys. Woo-woo is poo-poo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was contributed by my friend, the Unix terrorist. What's up? Okay, uh, yeah, so, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm, I'm new to this, if, if you're from the media, stop talking to those people and maybe they'll just go away and get lives and stop being on IRC all the time, I, I'd, I'd appreciate it, thank you. Um, what? Yeah, but, here. I, I hear the media left yesterday, um, I'm not on very good terms with the blonde chick from Tech TV. She wouldn't give me her number. I, could, could, could you write it down for me? Her phone number is 555-1212. I, I think you're lying. I can confirm that. Yo, I, 
couldn't pick up the pattern in that number. <laughs> okay, five 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 one two one two. That sounds pretty random, dog. <laughs> That's my social security number. Okay, um, now we're gonna move on to another topic. Um, hey. What's up? I think he's stepping. Do you have something to say about my cultural heritage? Do you know what it's like to grow up in the ghetto? Do you know what it's like to walk home from school every day, wonder if you're gonna get capped because you're wearing a red bull shirt? Yo, you have no idea. I think you need to sit down, son. Best recognize. Okay, um, now we're gonna talk about some stuff about the computer security industry. Um, Silvio here probably have some interesting things to say since, yeah, he works in the industry. Good guy. I love him like a brother. Um, let me see, I can't read my this. Uh... Okay, I just remembered that. Okay, um, the, the thing is, um, how many of you think most of the security companies really care about security? Can you like see a show of hands? Like, if you think that security companies actually want security, put your hands up right now. I think I saw one person, and I'm not quite sure. Two yeah. people. I don't know if this is true or not, though. Okay, who did you see? I think you just spotted the Fed. I don't know, he went away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, Silvio needs a t-shirt for spotting the Fed. Thank you. Um, this is my dream come true to get one of these t-shirts. Is, is the t-shirt coming? Okay. Um, but basically, I'm not speaking for everyone in the security world, like my friend Dave there, but um, they don't really care about security because like, if a state of security actually existed anywhere, like, where the fuck would they work? <laughs> if, I mean, think about it, it's just sort of, you know, logical. The security industry, you know, they can't get jobs, or they, you know, they can't sell their, you know, quarter of a million dollar sniffers unless you go ahead, or, or there's a state of insecurity, so. Please don't interrupt me again. You will be our end. The computer security industry, though, is a multi-billion uh, dollar industry, so, um, you know, it is treated very much like a business model. Um, you know, the, the ultimate goal of a computer security company isn't to make um, a secure environment, it's to make, actually, their quarterly, um, you know, earnings, their quarterly investment. You know, they have VCs, they have, like, their shareholders. Um, these, are the, these are the people that they're, they're concerned about. They're concerned about their own pockets, not really the security of computers. Uh, you know, Microsoft, for example, you know, they're fantastic at, you know, selling stuff. You know, that's great, but, you know, this is what they do. They don't actually write secure software. You know, it's, it's naive to think this is what they do. So I'll, I'll pass the mic back to uh, Gobbles. Yo, I think you might be getting a little bit too philosophical, Bob. Possibly. Yeah, um, we need to return to the concrete examples. But... It's all wet. It's okay. Um, you know, I can give examples here. I do work in the computer security industry. <laughs> Yo, that's a sad you from Microsoft? Microsoft? I, this, this can't be from Microsoft though because it's a free t-shirt. So, you know, what's going on there? I'm very poor. I accept cash donations from free beer, whatever. Find me. What? All right. Um, okay, anyhow. Um, <coughs> Uh, you know, a silly question here. Do people not believe that computer security is about, you know, marketing and about making money? Does, does anyone actually believe this? Like, um, does he work for open source? Or, you, know, uh, you know, does anyone believe this really? Like, you know, does Microsoft, uh, a lot, you know, are there vulnerabilities out there that vendors know about uh, that aren't getting fixed or aren't being reported to the public because it's a bad marketing campaign? Is this, you know, 
is there anyone that doesn't believe this? Um, you're, you're, you're getting too philosophical and serious here. Um, yeah, I have to. I'm gonna have to interrupt and move on to the next subject because. Um, no offense, not not you, but the, I realize how boring the whole topic of the security industry is. So we'll we'll talk about some more exciting things. Um, yeah, and then next we're going to talk about um, one of the shortest men in security and his project called Project Honeynet. Um, yeah, you know they're like all against black hats, like K2, or he's on the team, or whatever. Yep. Lance, I, I heard you're here. Could you come up here, Lance? Lance Spitzner. This is Gobbles calling Lance Spitzner. Yo, all I can say is if Lance Spitzner isn't here, you know, uh, know your enemy. Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be very, doing a very good job at knowing his enemy. Yeah, um, the guy. in the upcoming month or so and what we're going to do is basically I'm someone's going to deface on um, their official website and um, they will have one to you know, know the name of the service locate the vulnerable part of the code figure out all that was done on their system and then at the end of the week we'll see who the experts are Thank you. And remember, there's a special prize for anybody who uses buzzwords like knob sled and polymorphic shell code. I'm all about reading the honey net analyses, you know, they're great. Some incredible reverse engineers working on the project, just tearing it up. Uh, you might also get assembling all sorts of zero day TESO exploits. <laughs> You might also get to win a, a free HoneyNet movie, um, if anyone hasn't seen it yet. Um, Securityfocus.com with a K. Um, I was looking... I was, that's, that's a first, that's a K instead of the first C. Yes. The second if, if you could remember that. There's been some interesting contributions last night. Um, someone put Ryan Russell's home directory, a tarball of it. He's the blue boy right here. Can I have like a round of applause for him, please? Yeah, um, whoever did it, it's pretty funny. Uh, like, if the Gobbles t-shirts were here right now, I'd like give you a fucking thousand of them. Yeah, you know, I, I won't spoil the surprise, isn't it, from what I read, but it's pretty funny. Um, anyhow, before I get off, you know, the subject of Project Hunter, there's a couple things I'd like to point out. They talk about how they've got the best security uh, minds in the world working on their project. They're talking about, you know, how they're going to, you know, discover all this stuff. And so far, it, it, is anyone here from Project Hunter at all? Anyone have the balls to admit they're admitted with that shit? Anywhere? Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, come, come on up here. Come on. Mr. Fiber. Yo, if you can run strings on a binary, honey net may be for you. It, this guy writes Nmap, and I'd just like to say Nmap is a hell of a lot better than um it's a hell of a lot better than that ass take X probe stuff for that guy who like did 20 years of research into ICMP. We've got Rainforest Puppy. We we'd like to suggest that. We definitely uh, strongly suggest that you continue to use Nmap, which integrates many uh, essential features of scanning as outlined in the FRAC article, The Art of Scanning by uh, Theodore over here. TCP, UDP, ICMP, time stamps. You got the IDENT scan, the RPC scans, the null scans, the SIN scan, the FIN scan, the Christmas scan, and all sorts of shit. It's, it's just crazy. And we just like to send out a little message to X-Probe, you know? 
ICMP just does not cut it. We're, we're going to, at the end of the speech, we'll have an ethics roundtable discussion. We're, we're going to break out into an ethics discussion. We'll return to the normal speech in a few minutes. <laughs> I'd like no, to no, introduce no, to you uh, Ophir Arkin and uh, Theodore and Rainforest Puppy. Do we have the bats and gloves? <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Thank you. Can I say something? Uh, you have a mic. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, sometimes you like to smear all the people that do stuff. If you really read the stuff that we do, maybe you'll understand. Yeah, I, I don't read code. I can't read C code. That's I, bad, dude. Yeah, that's all right, but yeah, you can go sit now. That's cool, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, X-Pro, the only remotely exploitable scanner. You know what's really... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, just a second. Um, yeah, our going to say something and I have a couple questions for him. Uh, just a really quick thing. I don't think Lance Spitzer has ever even tried to code. Yeah, so, um, you know, that, that's never been a problem. And really, the project, the ones that we're learning and catching are the kids. The, the really stupid, fucked up, can't... You know, can't figure out how to even install rootkit type kids. The black hats that know what the fuck they're doing, like they're not going to be Max Vision. Spots. Wait, he's a white. Is Max Vision a white hat or a black hat? Because he's listed on your site as a white hat. And I'm just curious if writing worms and breaking the military service is white hat action or black hat action. I need a clarification because I understand the white hats are the good guys. So I'm not. Sh I, I just want to know. All right. Well, the way, this is those like suck <laughs> because it's you know it's not that clear, and I'm not going to even classify anyone. Okay. I like to wrap out a little shout to uh, Whisker. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, yeah, the, the scariest fucking pro code out there. <laughs> um, wait, but before you go, um, um, Project Harnet has been around for three years now, I think. Um, have they discovered a single unknown vulnerability being exploited in the wild? What? I think like half of one. <laughs> Where's the other? And um, you, you have to wonder, like these people beg for funding and everything, and they're not doing anything but making fun of a bunch of kids who install like traps on, you know. I heard Honeyman is pretty good for trapping cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> to mention that I feel that the wholesale slammer at the Gobble CGI marathon was ruthless and uncalled for. Yeah, uh, lost site scripting vulnerabilities are an issue which affect every one of us. <laughs> you, you gotta know what's out there. And don't forget the SQL injection bugs. Those are pretty revolutionary. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's all we need to say about Project HoneyNet. Uh, the project is stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wait, um, the Unix terrorist just um, brought something else up that I think you should all know. Um, we'll be releasing, we currently have, and we will be releasing sometime in the future, a zero-day VMware exploit that in conjunction with your normal exploits, what it does is it, it detects if you're running VMware or not. If it does, it escapes the VMware and um, RMs the box that it's on. So it'll be pretty nice because you'll get to RM the whole honey pot. If you
laptop to do some presentations, put up some emails. Um, does Ronan and his StatDX exploit? Can I, can I hear, get a round of applause for Ronan's StatDX exploit? It was used in like every last worm ever. Yo, give a shout out for StatD. Remote root the following. Come on. by StatD are also the source of like, you know, 90% of all the project HoneyNet, you know, write-ups. <laughs> After this came out, you know, it was fixed. Blue Bird is mailing this because he's running StatD at home. And he sees the, um, he, he sees a little shell code thing put in his, <laughs> in his syslog daemon and he wonders, hey, why is this still here? What, is there still room for exploitation? Why do I get this scary message? And Why do I see someone requesting a uh, dot percent 8x percent n? This is, this is obviously not a, uh, a part of the normal procedure. But could it possibly be? Yeah, so it's, if he had like taken the time to look at the code instead of being like the normal security focused mailing this poster who says, hey, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but maybe someone else does and, you know, fills those garbage lists up with more garbage. Uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, but before I move on, on the subject of my friend Rowan, he's a very lonely guy. He lives in Sydney, Australia. Um, any women out there um, who, you know, might like to meet him, his email address is shellcode at, ho at hotmail.com. That's shellcode at hotmail.com. And even if you're not a girl who wants to, you know, meet up with him and be, you know, his girlfriend, if you're a guy, if you're a fan or something, send him some fan mail, you know, say hi, thanks for the exploit, I love, like, owning shit with it. And <laughs> I, I'd really appreciate it if ever. Can I see a show of hands of how many people promise to email Ronan um, sometime in the next week? Hands? What? Come on. I'm not, I'm not going to move on until everyone puts their hands up. So, and yeah, come on, everyone, hands up. Because we might, we might have to increase the incentive by offering a prize. Um, zero day Apache exploits for anyone who starts, you know, not just emails him once, but establishes a friendship. And uh, <laughs> because, like I said, he's a lonely guy. We gotta we're do not, this. We're not talking about email only. You gotta meet this guy. Yeah, um, so cool. serious requests only. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, speaking of Voldep, um, there was recently a denial of service attack <laughs> launched against the list by um, some people who were speaking here. They sent out like, I don't know, 10 advisories all at once just like that. It's like flooded the list and like all that extra bandwidth is like very unethical. So we'd appreciate some more ethics, and if, we'd really appreciate it if you stop like trying to DDoS phone dev. Thank you. What's this here? Um, oh, there, there, there's one company I'd like to talk about for a second um, before you know I move on to whatever my next subject is. I'm, um, it's this company called Vigilante. Um, they're an international security company. Uh, make a lot of money. They charge quite a bit to scan your network with Nessus and tell you like what publicly available information like that exists that's like pertinent to their laziness and make a pretty good um, living off that. Um, whoever makes Nessus, I hear it has some origin in the underground when I was reading the ISS ethical hacking PDF. Uh, I'll study that tonight. Yeah. Um, Maybe who's ever doing that security focus with a K site might want to post ISFXLHacking.pdf up there. That's pretty good. Yo, is there a keyboard here we can type the URL up on? Nah, I guess not. But anyhow, several times people from this company after advisors have been posted will send us email asking us for exploits or more information because what we give them, you know, the vulnerability information we hand out to them isn't sufficient because they don't know what they're doing and um, they need
need to be able to verify it. It's, it's, it's this growing trend with security companies not knowing what they're doing, you know, not able to code, not able to analyze the security information given to find out the scope of a vulnerability. They need every detail right now, otherwise they're going out of business. It's sort of funny. You know, the next topic we'd like to get to is uh, corporations backdooring software. Well, who knows about corporations, but we're going to talk about some recent hacks at least. Um, how about that open SSH backdoor? Open BSD, CVS owned, whoever did it, I love you. I, um, do, do the OpenBSD developers have a comment on that? I wonder if the uh, OpenBSD developers would like to comment on the uh, SunOS box that hosts their FTP server getting owned, the proactively secure operating system. Welcome back. The, the CVS machine wasn't actually owned. Something else happened, but I'm not going to say what it was. Okay. Does this sound like a secret patch? Wait, 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 wait. So it Are wasn't you trying to so fix your security holes in private? I thought you were proactively secure. Why don't you want this to not happen to anybody else out there? Well, why are you holding back zero day? I'd like to clam for ethical hacking here. Uh, it wasn't actually a hey, software. Hey, where are you guys going? Sit down. down. Uh, Sit. <laughs> Hold on. What? What? Alright, I got you. Anyone who leaves you now, it's an Apollo. You're a loser. This is, this is where to be, right here. Let me ask you something. Do you want to listen to a speech or do you want to see awards? Yeah. So One second. Still waiting for the response. Yeah, it uh, wasn't a secure. Uh, it wasn't a software problem at all. Really, it was somebody's. Somebody did something stupid. So. Oh, so you're basically admitting the uh, incompetence of the developers and or administrators of the site? No. I would like some sort of clarification here. I, I would appreciate it if the uh, OpenBSD Open people would like to stop skirting around the issue. I think we all have a need to know. Information needs to be free. So I'll give you one more chance. No. <laughs> there we have it. OpenBSD is communism. I, I think um, anti-NSA is on the OpenBSD team now. Anyhow, um, I've got to say, hacking right now is like, what's going on in the scene, it's like at an all-time high. It's, it's beautiful, the level of chaos and mischief going on. I mean, we're looking at first backdoor, we see this IRC client, you know, this really lame. What's up? Oh, okay. Can you not hear me clearly? Okay, um, and all the security professionals sort of, you know, laughed at this hole in, or this backdoor that was put into this IRC client. So the next thing we see that happen is we see the prestigious Doug Sniff hacked, and we see all his software backdoor with the same sort of, um, backdoor as... He tried to fix it silently for what I can hear because the embarrassment was too much. He's an OpenBSD developer, you know, ego, we're perfect, that sort of thing. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I, oh, what was that? I'm sorry, that was not intelligent. Anyhow, yeah, the, the mischief that's going on, ELA, this backdooring and stuff, I love it. Those of you who are actually in some sort of a hacker scene like that, you're fucking cool. Keep it up. Yo, I think we're going to need to pick up the pace here because we got a lot of stuff to go through, so let's make it snappy. Yeah. Um, another quick point to make, everything will and can be owned. Zero-day exploits do exist. Lots of people have them. So, I mean, just pretty much sit back and take it because the security industry isn't going to actually provide you with security. They'll get owned. Yeah. Um, where are we now? Oh yeah, 
Theo. We're going to talk about Theo. Who loves Theo? How about that? That wasn't very strong. Um, yeah, can I just show of hands to see who loves Theo? Five people. How many people love Gobbles? Does anybody like Theo more than Gobbles? Has anyone had Theo's child? <laughs> Yo, so I guess we'd like to have the Open DSD represent representative up here for another uh, set of questioning. We'd like to know why uh, the founder of a proactively secure operating system is uh, found on IRC, IRC from cbs.openbsd.org. Does this sound like a good idea to you? <laughs> Have you heard of the recent problems with uh, IRC2 derivative IRC clients? Um, yeah. Why, does anyone out there know why Doug Song, this white hat or whatever he is, is sitting on this this like mammoth hole in the Epic IRC client that let even him get a like remote root in Epic the IRC client. But, yeah, no one knows what I'm talking about. It's probably for your own good. But, yeah. Um, don't use IRC. <laughs> oh, so we had another interesting point. So if you all remember the uh, the recent Open SSH challenge exploit. Uh, you can remember that 3.3 shipped with uh, privilege separation but was still vulnerable. Even though 3.4 had already been released, Theo uh, only upgraded his home box to the 3.3 version, thinking that because it ran privilege separation, zeus.theos.com was invulnerable. And you think the rumor the underground is Theo got hacked. Yeah, but, you know, that's expected because when you've got a guy like Theo who threatens to hack the NetBSD developers, threatens to hit them with denial of service attacks and all that other, you know, white hat stuff. I'd like everybody to know that I had no nothing to do with this. I just use the uh, SSH banner scanner that ships with OpenBSD, so that's how I was looking around the networks. Oh, oh we, we have our um, friend from OpenBSD here again. Um, big round of applause. Take lots of pictures. So, uh, so you guys, you guys are using Telnet, right? Are you paying for your SSH? No, um, we wrote our own. Basically, we use Telnet over an SSL tunnel. All right. Okay. That's what um, I wait, 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 I have one more question. Um, I, I hear that there's this feud going on between. Get that um, there. There's a feud going on between um, Theo and like some of the people from Red Hat, like. Um, Mark and Alan Cox, and I hear that Theo likes to talk a lot of shit about OpenSSL and how much it sucks. Um, if if OpenBSD has all these, you know, cryptography experts and everything, why are you still using OpenSSL? And um, when you talk so much shit about it, why why are you depending on something so shitty as you would like to call it? Can't can't you do it on your? And why do you rip NetBSD's work so much? I'd like to interject that Alan Cox is actually at DevCon. He's waiting to fight Theo, but Theo never showed up. So I don't really know what the story is here, but we're actually just feeding everyone a Trojan. Oh, like open SSH. Just, just like Alan said. Four P one dot TGZ. You mean that sort of Trojan? Do you like backdooring your uh, open BSD kernel? First remotely exploitable kernel in history. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm not sure. Uh, we, we've been taking quite a long time in our presentation here. I think we're going to talk about some other things, um, some people, some fun stuff. We're going to you know, shamelessly plug some things for people. The first is Joey. That's J-O-E-W-E-E. -E -E. He has an upcoming book called The Hacker Cracker. And it's about a young boy in the ghetto growing up and how hard his life is and how he became a hacker and everything he went through went on in his life and how he got to that point. Sounds like it's going to be a fascinating book or something. Um, I think the full name of the book is uh, Hacker Cracker, A Journey from the Cold Streets to the Frontiers of Cyberspace. <laughs> Probably, I would have to say that 
I'm very suspicious of this book, as it, it might be have actually it. been ripped off my own autobiography. So, I don't appreciate this. You know, I distribute my autobiography on LiveJournal.com because I don't feel the need to scam people into buying a worthless book. But, um, the next, yeah, the next series, he's had a hard life. He's living it up now. Um, then we have young H.D. Moore um, from Digital Offense. Um, he is featured in this newly released book called, uh, what was it? I can't even remember my fucking writing. Hacker Diaries. The Hacker Diaries. That's it. Um, that's a book of um, skilled hackers and blackheads like Rafa from the World of Hell. Cool Harper and Giles. He's got mad skills. Yeah, um, it, it covers all sorts of hackers and you know the stuff they did, and like until they became you know respected security professionals. It's it's an interesting look into who's working in the security industry these days. I, I advise everyone go out and buy a copy of that book. I'll autograph it. I'm not in it, but I will autograph it. Um, that's it. Oh. Um, who out here reads um, things written by Brian McWilliams? The, does anyone out here know who Brian McWilliams? Who he is? Okay, next topic. The, oh, okay. Whose speech is this? <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah, um, basically this guy, he, I, since the Unix terrorist doesn't want me to talk about him as long as I'd like to, I'm not, not sure what the Unix terrorist has to hide here, um, but this, this person likes to email people and say things like, hey, Kimball.org is running a vulnerable SSH demon, what do you think of that? And people, Can I get a holler for Kimball? Is there any Kimball fans out here? He, he's out of prison now. Back in, you know, living the high life, he's, making the big He's out of prison, making his way back to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I have forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyhow, Brian McWilliams also is a sensationalist. He writes stories. Um, he writes stories with information contributed by one anonymous person about another anonymous person, and you know, thinks it's some. It's like worth, you know, being published. The whole thing of like being a reporter and trying to make your life on chron chronicling the hacker scene and what's going on there is pretty dumb because any like hackers that would talk to you and like about what they're doing probably aren't hackers other than gobbles but you know fame whores. Yeah. Should skip that one. Just go straight to that. Okay. Um. We have a breaking news flash. Yeah, breaking news flash. Last night. Um. A member of ISSX forces declared an unholy war on both Core ST and EI. And, and NAI. Oh, and NAI. ISS has declared war on all of these companies. Yes, um, it started with a fight last night between a researcher from, uh, a researcher from, damn, I'm tired, from ISS uh, against another researcher from um, Core ST and, you know, Watch out for Project Mayhem, because you have no idea who's behind this. Also, if you remember that Apache chunk vulnerability, which was in reality discovered first by EI, but then somehow some sort of shady exploit from ISS was seen making the rounds. This is, a, this is an act of war. We're raising the Eris threat con to level five. <laughs> five? Deep side, sorry, submit. Thank you, Blue Boar. Um, yeah. Um, there's these two companies, Snowsoft. Um, Snowsoft likes to. Miss that. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, but, uh, are you KF? Come on up here, KF. Kevin F. something. Finister, Finister, something. If you can code mediocre exploits like simple local stack overflows, this guy will give you $50 a copy. <laughs> what, what would you like to say, Kev? I ain't got nothing to say about dot uh, .flash. We uh, do pay people to write exploits, that's true. What can I say? 50 bucks a pop. Nah, 50 bucks for three. It's much cheaper. Damn, that Erebus guy, he lied to me. 
All right, that's all you can sit down. All right. Hey, we'll be releasing some True 64 exploits real soon. So, uh, 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 when you, it'll be simple stack overflows. When are you guys going to write your own uh, alpha shell code instead of borrowing good old Taiho O's? Yeah, well, I don't know. Not important. Um, Put this your is hands company. up in the air for Snowsaw. <laughs> I, I, I can't seem to get the clap going on the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? He's talking shit to the Unix uh, terrorists. I, I don't know what, what's going on here. So, so some guy from Snowsoft. I think this is a declaration of war. Can the Ares threat con meter go any higher? <laughs> Nuclear winter is impending. Um, another security company that's sort of fun. Oh, before I um, get to this, um, today is a groundbreaking day in computer security as Darknet returns to the public. Hack.co.za is reopened today. Yeah! Hack.co.za, um, all, yeah, all those pen testers out there who don't work for a big company, now you've got an easy place to find the tools to make money for you. Hack.co.za was planning to reopen about a year ago, but they took them several months to code the uh, countdown timer on their page. So they had to delete the reopen reopening for a while, so. Yeah, um, but thank God it's up now. Yeah, um, anyhow, Fab for life. <laughs> um, yeah, Isaac, or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, Darknet member, uh, he has a security company called um, 2XS or something like that in Israel? Yes. Um, Members hey. are uh, the hey. Analyzer, Isaac, and uh, Mixter. Three uh, incredibly intelligent chaps, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, hey, the open BSD trick isn't was paying attention. Hey, pay attention. Pay hey, you, you, you sit over there. You get up and sit over there. All right, you know what's up. Anyhow, um, you know they, they, you know they, they come up with these revolutionary bugs that they've discovered with their proprietary code auditing tools. Um, one was a bug in LS that they thought might be exploitable in some way, something. They're not interesting enough in this. What, I, what I'd like to ask is how are we having major security companies which are receiving millions of dollars of funding publishing papers on hijacking the path environment variable to get the root user to execute something other than SU, you know? Like, what's up with that? Yeah, um, don't forget, um, there's a great um, little collection of papers that everyone should go read, um, segfault.net slash out. Uh, anyone been there? Skyper, you do a good job keeping that up. It's appreciated. We love it. Um, we're getting through here. Um, We're on so the last page of notes. Yeah, last page of three. Um, we've got some interesting research from Matt's sake that's going around. Um, like, I don't know, five years of research into uh, like Palm OS vulnerabilities and um, uh, other things that are incredibly pertinent to computer security. Um, like. You know what's really great is if you're a big security company and you take the time to research like worthless things just so that you can you know show you're smart or something. Um, yeah, I I guess that's all I have to say about Kingpin. So, as part of our uh, thorough ongoing investigation, uh, we have discovered some very shady developments in the underworld. It turns out that. <laughs> Well, we'd really like this explained. Why is every frack article written by a member of TSO? Is this really a hacker's magazine for the community, or are we gonna let some other people publish some work? I, I'm a little bitter that Skyper tricked me once. I love the guy, but he tricked me and said that I'd be profiled, but then he just put me in loop back. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, um, there's been a recent merger in the scene. Um, Angry Packet has merged with Woo Woo, and we would like to announce um, Dimuz, whatever his name is, is now a uh, core researcher for Woo Woo. Um, expect some more Mac OS, Microsoft, word processing. Um, 
Yeah, so here's something that needs attention. So, th th this is important. This is important on two levels. First of all, we have LSD, PL. You might remember what yes, Sage of Delirium. I'm sure a lot of you use your exploits. Yes. Yeah. Originally, as you may remember, the site was released uh, claiming it to be a private venture. They said they would never name the members. They said they were never going to... Uh... Hold up a second here. We're having Phoenix a Phoenix wrote this and he's a little... Cheap. I'm getting a little bit excited here. Calm down, big guy. I'm trying. So, they, they said that they would be a... Wake up! They said they'd be a hobbyist group, and they wouldn't release their names. Now if you go to the website, <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been uh, redesigned using the Tahoma font. I don't know, but uh, that seems to be pretty popular on Microsoft-based web pages. Uh, we also have the names of all five members. But on the other side, uh, you may remember uh, Argus Systems put out a uh, hacking challenge for Pitbull claiming to offer $50,000. And of course, as you remember, LSD won that contest. Argus, of course, didn't think that they could possibly be owned by a uh, user LDT call gate descriptor uh, privilege violation, which had already, be, already been discovered in like Linux 1.0. But apparently it did happen, and they were able to pop root on the machine, and they were declared the winners of the contest, but they still haven't been paid. Yeah, well, what's up with this? Hey, if you're from Argus, you need to pay those guys now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, and, you know, this happened a while back, but what's up with this happy hacker chick releasing Trojan exploits on bug track? What? <laughs> Like, I lost my home directory on that. I was really pissed off. Yeah, that happened to me too when I ran the uh, Frag 59 extraction utility. <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't running it as root. I was. So, um, there's some interesting papers a while ago. Um, Wobbles. Is Wobbles out here? Wobbles. Wobbles. Inviting cousin Wobbles. Um, we know you're here. I, I don't see Wobbles. Uh, we're just going to talk about his Rise of the Robots paper. But he's not here, so, okay. I love the guy. So what if he's Polish? Yeah. Are, are you racist? Hack that SC is a bunch of racists. Yeah. Are you stepping? <laughs> I've got a giant. So back down. <laughs> yeah. You don't want a piece of this. This is no joke. This is not the frack goons. I am the Unix terrorist. I will RM you without remorse. <laughs> Okay, um, something to look forward to from ISS in the coming months, they'll be releasing their UFTP exploit, or advisory, not their exploit. Um, it's post authentication, anonymous access is enough, remote root. Um, if they'd like to coordinate the release of that with the re release of our exploit for it, that'd be pretty cool. So just so you know, an ISS exploit who FTP'd is out floating around and you are unprotected because they do not want to tell you. First they declare war on NAI, Core SDI, and EI. Yeah. Now they're declaring war on you. Threat con level 7. <laughs> this is the Unix terrorist. Um, that's basically all we wanted to present to you and talk to you about. Um, so now I suppose... We can have questions or something, or if there's anything you'd like to talk about, if there's any heckling from the OpenBSD chick, anything she'd like to try to say, or whatever, you know, any more embarrassment to the OpenBSD cause, now is the time. Oh, wait, no, no, no applause yet, please. Um, is there anything anyone would like to say or would like to know about gobbles or anything out there? Anyone? You. Um, back in December. Oh, 
I, I apologize. Um, the question was how long was the Apache exploit around? How long do we have it? We've had it since December, just in case there's any confusion on that. Um, you. Say. Yeah, um, I, I would recommend, uh, this is okay, this is what we all use from Gobbles, uh, this is what Unix Heroes use, this is what Silvio uses on his desktop, Plan 9. It's all about Plan 9. Yo, holla back to Bell Labs. Um, anything else? Questions? Fun. Yes, sir. Um, you're right, OpenBSC doesn't make a lot of money for their products, but the developers get paid quite a bit of money to do what they're doing. Yes, you are correct. I, I think what's bad about OpenBSC is they advertise being secure. There are more kernel bugs in OpenBSD. Like, when, when OpenBSD developers take the, like import the NetBSD CVS tree into their own, they like say, this code is too clean, let's put some integer overflows in. We must give them credit, they do know how to set up a good backdoor. <laughs> I just like to know why, uh, so, so what is all the OpenBSD development going on? You know, it's just like grepping for stir copies and stir cats, but in reality, the entire code base, you know what I'm saying, like the device drivers, uh, the file system implementations, virtual me memory management has all been ripped from NetBSD. So there's really no progress because every time new hardware is supported, it gets ported directly from NetBSD or FreeBSD. So like, what's going on here? Is this really an OS to the I think a lot of Linux too. I don't get it. But you know, we haven't seen open a, BSD. We haven't seen a change to a uh, file and user source sys on OpenBSD for like five years. Um, yes. I have to disagree with that one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you look at the, uh, I haven't looked at the NetBSD code, but uh, FreeBSD, Linux, and OpenBSD, um, they all have their different uh, approaches and different ways of doing things. Although uh, much of it is from a you know, common Unix philosophical standpoint. Um, when is the memcopy thing going to be fixed? The the, 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 bug, the, bug, yeah. the BSD kernels that make the Apache exploitation so much easier. When is that going to be fixed? Can you explain to us why uh, ECS because is so of the stack? Sorry. Are you trying to encourage a whole new class of vulnerabilities by designing your bcopy.s in such a manner that can be easily exported? Because that, that bug was a joke. It was a piece of cake. 100% reliability, first shot. Is this is this the uh, is this the brand of a proactively secure operating system? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. I guess this is the end of the speech. Sort of. Um. There's a few things people would like. I forgot to agree. Um. I'd really like to um, express my thanks to Mark Dode of Internet Security Systems on um, X Forces um, Australia for buying me a drink the other night. Mark's a great guy. Um, other people from ADM who are supporting Gobbles, um, earlier today, Dice from ADM, he bought me my, bre my breakfast, and he, you know, he told me, he said, yeah, ADM's got to give bla back to the blackout, black hat community somehow. What a prince. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, like, uh, there are wolves among us.